Happy New Year, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I will be talking about my portfolio outlook for 2024. Um, about a year ago, I made a portfolio outlook for my 2023. Now, the thing is, what I've learned over that year or over the past year is even though you have an outlook or you have a, a, a way you want to set your portfolio for the year, it is not set in stone or it is not written in stone or set in stone or however the expression is but this is the core of what you're working with or the template and then you adjust as time goes by or as um, events unfold so what i've come to realize is because towards the end of last year the, there was real volatility in the market i believe between october and december because i got two contracts for iwm and then what happened was there was a little bit of volatility. And like I said before, I try to stay away from volat uh, volatile stocks. IWM is an index ETF for Russell 2000. So it's not like it's really volatile, but sometimes things happen in the market. The stock or the shares misbehaves or acts out of character, and then it comes back. But ever since October, it's, it's been really volatile. So I bought two share two contracts which is 200 shares and then so the price dropped rapidly and i and then i bought 200 shares because of the price drop that allowed me to buy the second 100 leg of it and then it rose up again and then it dropped rapidly now when it rose up it went past the price that i i didn't want to let it go because it went past my strike price so I added in a little bit of money uh, to buy back the contract. And after I bought the contract, I remained in, in game. It was still my uh, shares. And then it rose up again and went past that. And I was like, nope, I'm not buying it back. And I believe that was at about 170. And I left it at that. And then it went, just kept going up, kept going up. Same with the S&P 500. And it got to a point where... Okay, I couldn't afford to buy two, <laughs> 200 shares again, but I didn't want to buy 100 because the way I was looking at it, it was highly priced. It's, it's almost at an all-time high at that stage. So I was thinking it might come down, it might go up. Like I, I am not the type that likes to predict the market, but again, every now and again, you see something acting out of character. You know something is wrong. It's usually trading within this range. Now, the fact that it's at this range means sometimes you have to just hold on. So I've been holding on since... Uh, I gave it about, and then I started selling, I, I think that was in November, and then I started selling puts far out of the money puts just so that it doesn't get, get come down and me having to buy it at a higher price. But then I just decided uh, this week past that I was going to buy it anyway. So it dropped down to one, I believe right now it's at about 196, but it went past my put strike price at 197. At 196, yeah. So now it's a little bit below 196, but my put strike price was at 196, and it's gone below that. So I've been assigned the shares this weekend. So starting Monday, which is tomorrow, I will be owning 100 shares of my the IWM Russell 2000, be it at a higher price. And this is how my portfolio is going to be laid out: 100 shares of IWM. Now, I intend to go into real estate as well to get exposure to real estate, but I don't want to buy REITs, individual REITs. I always advise to go with ETFs, especially for beginners. And I don't have time to start analyzing, uh, looking into the um, company balance sheet, cash flow, analyzing all different ones before I can choose a particular one. So what I just do is I tend to go for ETFs and indexes. So I'm getting an, uh, a REIT ETF, and the one I found that seemed to be as stable as even the Vanguard one is the IYR, ticker symbol IYR. That's the one I'm going for. I'm not asking you to do the same. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So I'm getting 100 shares of that. That will give me exposure to real estate. I think there's about 72 or 73 REITs or REITs in that fund. So that gives me good exposure to that. And then I'll be looking at make, um, purchasing or getting into a position as well. Remember, 
Remember, any position I'm going into, I'm not just buying outright. I'm selling puts on it. I don't just go into a position straight away. I sell puts on it, so hopefully I can get it at a discount. The next one I'll be getting is 100 shares of the 20-year Treasury bond TLT. Now, that one is, it also has something to do with futures as well. But look, it gives me exposure to the bond market, and I'm getting 100 shares of that as well. Mind you, all these uh, funds paid quarterly dividends, but TLT pays monthly dividends. So I'm looking to capture the dividends as well. And the last one I'll be going into is SLV Silver ETF. Now, everybody should have some precious metals in their portfolio. So I'm looking to get 100 shares of SLV as well. So that'll be my portfolio layout, 100 shares of each. IWM, IYR, TLT, and SLV. That will be the core for 2024 because I don't know where the market is going to go with Fed, whether they're increasing the rate or cutting rate or whatever, and that is going to affect the market however it goes. So I only want to stay in those four core ETFs for now. Now, we'll be playing around with some other stocks or shares in a little or in little capacity. Right now, I have KSS calls. Now, I don't have 100 shares of that because I'm not selling options on that, but I'm just collecting the dividend because the dividend is nice. And I have um, um, IEP, uh, what's his name? Carl Eichhand one. Now, that one, I just bought 100 shares of it before, and then I sold out of it, and the dividend I've received has bought a few shares of IEP and I just left it like that. Let, let it keep compounding its own dividend at its own rate. And for KSS, I believe that's what I'm doing with that as well. And this will be my core for 2024. As opportunities arise, I will be looking into maybe expanding the positions. So I'm selling cover calls on all those ones that I have that are 100 shares each. That is IWM, IYR, TLT, and SLV. I'll be selling cover calls on those. And if possible, sell cash secured put as well, if at any stage they get taken away from me, but I try to avoid that. And then this will be, this should hold me till at least June. And in the summer, what, so what, <laughs> what I've done before now is I will take a loan. Yeah, I will take a loan and invest in stocks. People are like, why would you take a loan? I think I made a video about this a few weeks ago. Why would you, during Halloween, why would you take a loan to invest in stocks? It's pretty volatile. But here's the thing. The stocks I'm investing in, I know they're not going down to zero. They're appreciating assets. Now, they might fluctuate, but in the long run, or in the long term, they're appreciating assets. Same with many other assets that people buy, buildings, properties, and whatever. But what I don't want to do is borrow money and buy depreciating assets like cars and things like that. My car is fine. Like I said, I'll just take it to the car wash, do the valet, internal valet, and change the, the seat cover, the floor mat, change the air freshener, and we're good. Okay, NCT, I believe I have NCT on the 15th, 15th or 18th of this month. I have my NCT is actually in February, but I'll go for NCT in January. So it will fail. I want to see if it passes fine, but I know it's going to fail, hopefully. No, hopefully not. Hopefully it doesn't fail, but it might fail. And that's the whole point of going first. So I see where it fails and then I go fix that and then come back. So that's my portfolio layout for 2024. See you in the next video.